So good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture. Well, in today's lecture, this is uh, going to be the last lecture in this section of uh, electrostatics. Uh, electrostatics is over. The only part that is remaining is a bit of a theoretical concept. Uh, and this theoretical concept consists of the concept of conductors. What do you mean by conductors? And what are its properties? I have seen a lot of questions based on this in your exam. So we will start with the same topic, conductors and its properties. And please pay attention to all these small points because all these questions are going to come as numerical, uh, as uh, theoretical questions. And in electrostatics, more than numerical, we are expecting more theoretical questions in your NEET exam. So let us uh, begin with the properties of a conductor, conductor and its properties. That would be the heading for this particular uh, section, conductor and its properties. And we will try to, I'll try to give you all the properties step by step in a very systematic way so that it is easier for you to remember. The first property of a conductor, I mean, everyone knows what is a conductor. A conductor is nothing but it consists of a large number of free electrons which can uh, large number of electrons which can freely move inside the conductor yes or no so that is the <clears throat> first thing that you must remember about a conductor conductor usually has a large number of free electrons a large number of free electrons which can easily move from one place to another. Conductor. Conductor. Large number of free electrons. Have you noted this down? Point number two, inside a conductor. Inside a conductor. In the material of a conductor, electric field is always zero. If you are talking about a conductor, inside the conductor, electric field is zero or you can say this in a different way there is no charge there is no charge there is no charge in the volume in the volume of a conductor there cannot be any charge in the volume of a conductor. In the volume of a conductor, there is no charge. If there is no charge in the volume of a conductor, then where will the charge come? If there is no charge inside the volume of a conductor, then where will the charge come? Yes. Where will the charge come if there is no charge in the volume of the conductor? Where will the charge come, Bacha? Tell me. Simple question. If there is no charge, no charge can remain inside the conductor, my dear friends. If no charge can remain inside the conductor, my dear friends, then where will the charge come? Yes, my dear friends. Where will the charge come? If you charge a conductor, where will the charge come? That is the next point. The charge always resides on the outer surface of the conductor. As you can see in this diagram, whenever you charge a conductor, 
charge will always come on the outer surface of the conductor and in the inner surface inside no charge can come charge is zero and electric field is zero do we understand this yes or no no yes You understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. Then other thing that you can see in this diagram very clearly. The other thing that you can see in this diagram very clearly is the next point. Electric field is always perpendicular to the conducting surface you can see my bacha there is an electric field which is coming out of this conductor and you can very clearly see that it is coming out at 90 degrees do we understand this please note each and every point very 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 carefully any one of this point will come any one of this point will come in your exam. I'll give you a minute to note it down. Very important topic this. Very important topic this. Many questions come from this topic. And if you are careful in understanding this topic, my dear friends, it is a very easy topic. And all the questions that will come, you would be able to solve them very, very easily. Very, very easily, you should be able to solve them. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, what we see is electric field. Inside a conductor is zero. Electric field always is perpendicular to the conductor. That means we can say the next point The surface of the conductor, the surface of the conductor is EQ potential. Conductors are EQ potential surface. All points on the conductor, whether it is on the conductor point A or inside the conductor point B, VA will be equal to VB. All points on the conductor should be of the same potential. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Conductors are equipotential surfaces. Conductors are equipotential surfaces. Conductors are equipotential surfaces. Have we noted this down? Yes, sir. Then the same thing said in a different way. Electric field lines, they never can cross or enter a conductor. We have seen examples of this as well, where electric field lines were terminating. Do we remember this? 
electric field lines we had seen we are terminating on the conductor and they were terminating or emerging perpendicularly Have you noted this down, beta? I'm just looking at the diagram. If I can find it, I will show it to you again so that you can draw that diagram. Else I will have to draw it again. Just give me a minute. Try and find our diagram. where you could see that electric lines of force were terminating and emerging out of the conductor. You can see this diagram which we had done in the class on electric lines of force and then I asked you which is the correct diagram of electric field lines. Do you remember which is the correct diagram of electric field lines? Which is the correct diagram of electric field lines? That bacha? Which is the correct diagram of electric field lines? Number four. Why it is number four? Because they cannot enter a conductor and they should emerge out and terminate perpendicular to the conductor. So the correct answer is option number four. So remember this, option number four. Option number four. Now, since electric field cannot enter and it is always perpendicular, we have seen, we have seen that conductor is an equipotential surface. The next point is this. What is the value of electric field just outside a conductor? So remember, just outside the conductor, electric field is given by sigma by epsilon naught. This is the formula where sigma is charge per unit area. So you can write this sigma is total charge divided by total area. Just outside a conductor, just outside a conductor, electric field is charge per unit area sigma divided by epsilon naught sigma divided by epsilon naught Now, if you have an irregular shape of conductor, 
the charge density would be different at different points. Charge density would be different at different points. In that case, electric field just outside that point would be different. As you can see, this conductor is of irregular shape. This conductor is of irregular shape. So the charge densities are also different and the electric fields are also different. Here the question, here the answer is given in terms of vector. If you don't want to write vector, you can remove this vector sign and you can remove this n. This n only gives you the direction. So you may not write this. You may just simply write the value of electric field just outside a conductor would depend on the surface charge density of the conductor. Now you can see here, this is a sharp point. This is a sharp point and this one is probably more plain or blunt. Where will more charge come? So remember, more charge will come at the sharper point. So that is the next point that you must write. More charge more charge will come at sharper point. Or the other way, this sigma is inversely proportional to the radius of curvature. If the radius is less, charge is more. If radius is more, charge is less. Okay, have you noted this down up till here? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Then, the next point is, if a conductor is grounded, now you will come across many questions where conductor is grounded, what do you mean by conductor being grounded? Conductor being grounded or earth, the other, the other term is earth. If the conductor is grounded or earth, its potential becomes zero. Why is potential becoming zero? Because we take that the potential of earth is zero and when the conductor is connected to earth, the potential becomes same as the potential of earth and the potential of earth is taken as zero. Do we understand what I'm saying here, Bacha? Please listen to my words very, very carefully. If the conductor is grounded or earth, its potential will become zero. its potential will become zero. Now, if the conductor is isolated, when I say isolated, it means it is alone, not connected to anything. If the conductor is isolated, then its charge will become zero. Potential will become zero? Yes. If it is not connected to anything, it is isolated from everything, then its charge will become a zero. So in this case, this was earthed, its charge also becomes a zero. Is everyone understanding this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. These are simple, simple points where there could be a question directly on this. Please remember it. Please remember it. And please remember it.
next point if two conductors are connected to each other charge will flow until the time their potential become equal we will do more on this in the next chapter don't worry you just need to write down right now if there is two conductors and you connect them by a wire charge will flow until the potential of the two conductors become same we understand this yes or no Have you noted this down? The next thing is pressure or electric pressure on a conductor. So whenever conductor is given charge, it also experiences electric pressure. You just have to remember how much is the electric pressure. It is sigma square by 2 epsilon naught. Electric pressure on the surface of a conductor is sigma square by 2 epsilon naught. Remember this. Remember these properties of a conductor. Have you noted this down, beta? Yes, sir. Yes, beta? Okay. Now, uh, the next thing that we are going to do and understand about conductor is Cavity inside conductor. You understand the meaning of cavity? I mean, you are going to be doctor, so you would be understanding what is cavity. Do you understand cavity? Cavity inside conductor. Do you understand the meaning of cavity? Empty space, sir. Empty space, sir. Yes, empty space, sir. Now, if you have a conductor which has an empty space, so let me try to draw a conductor with an empty space. Now remember this empty space could be of any size or any shape. So I am just drawing a random empty shape. I'm drawing a random. Uh, so this is a conductor as you can see. This is a spherical conductor and there is a cavity inside this. Now, if I give charge to this conductor, where will that charge go? Will it go inside the cavity? Will it be appearing on the inside of the cavity? You must remember that even if there is a cavity inside the conductor, the charge on the conductor only comes on the outer surface. Even if First point, even if there is cavity inside the conductor, charge will only appear on the outer surface. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. 
Okay. So even if you create a cavity or an empty space inside the conductor and you charge the conductor, you will not find any charge coming on the cavity. The charge will only come on the outer surface of the conductor. Do we understand this? Everyone got this? Now we will uh, do some cases and I hope that you can draw the diagram as well as draw the case. So let me first tell you the case. Case number one. And any of this case can come as a question in you. Uh, case number one, I've already shown it to you. This is case number two. In case number two, what I have done, I have drawn a random conductor. And as you can see, I have put a charge Q at the center inside the cavity. Now, because of this charge inside the cavity, you can see a minus Q charge coming on the surface of the cavity and a plus Q charge because the total charge of the cavity should remain, total charge of the conductor should remain zero. A plus Q charge will come on the outer surface. So that is what you have to write. If a charge Q is kept in the cavity, then minus Q charge is coming on the inner surface and plus Q charge will be coming on the outer surface of the conductor. Do we see this everyone? These are all questions that are going to come beta in your exam. If I keep a minus, if I keep a plus Q charge, if I keep a plus Q charge, in the cavity, that is what is going to happen. Have we noted it down, beta? Case number one. Then I will show you case number two as well. Now in case number two, what has happened? I have put a Q charge at the center. Because of this Q charge at the center, you can see minus Q has come on the inner cavity and plus Q has come on the outer cavity, plus small Q. But apart from this, I have also given the conductor a charge of plus Q. So that plus Q also comes on the outer surface. So you can see on the outer surface, you will have plus small Q plus capital Q. On the inner surface, you will have minus Q because there is a charge placed at the cavity, inside the cavity. Do we understand this? I give you two minutes to note it.
हैव यू नोटेड इट बच्चा देन कम्स दिस केस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट केस ओके ओके आई जस्ट पेस्ट दिस वेन यू आर डन प्लीज लेट मी नो कंप्लीटेड सर 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 Have we done this, beta? Yes, sir. Okay, you no one said anything. Okay, the next case is this one. Now we have some charges present inside the surface, and some charges present outside or on the outer surface. Remember, any charge present inside the surface cannot create any field. at any point outside similarly any charge outside cannot create any field inside do we understand this so inside charges can only create field inside outside charges can only create field outside outside cannot create field inside inside cannot create field outside do we understand this Everyone understands this. <laughs> this phenomena is also known as electrostatic shielding. This phenomena is also known as electrostatic shielding. Okay. So note this down, please.
everyone has noted this down noting okay then we have four more cases if you understand those four cases we are done Okay, now these are the different cases that you must remember. How our charge is coming? So here I have charge placed at the center. So the case is charge is at the center. Then the charge on S one and S two both will be distributed uniformly. So S one charge on the S one surface will be coming as minus Q. because plus q is at the center so on this surface you will have minus q on on this surface you will have plus q both will be uniform distribution do we understand this okay This is case number two. Q not at center. Q not at center, but here also you will have minus Q, and here you will have plus Q. At S one surface, it will be non-uniform, but at the S two surface, you will have uniform. Do we understand this? Minus Q will come on S one, plus Q will come on S two. S one will have non-uniform arrangement, non-uniform charge distribution, but S two will have spherical charge distribution. Do we understand this? Are we drawing this? <laughs> we can understand these cases you might get a question based on this here we have a non uniform cavity charge q is placed at the center on this surface you will have minus q on this surface you will have plus q on s1 surface it will be non uniform because that surface is non uniform on s2 surface it would be uniform because the surface is uniform everyone getting what i am saying here yes or no
Dancer. Okay. This is the fourth case. Now, since I have shown you so many cases, can you tell me? Can you tell me what will be the charge? On this surface, it will be minus Q charge. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. And on the outer surface, you will get plus Q charge. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Can you tell me what will be the uh, distribution on S1? Will it be uniform or will it be non-uniform? Non-uniform, sir. Very good. It will be non-uniform. On the surface S2, can you tell me whether it will be uniform or non-uniform, bacha? Uniform, sir. Very good. So we are able to understand what we are doing here. Well done. I hope everyone is drawing this. The more you understand this, the better you are going to become in this particular topic. Three more cases are there. So let me put them one by one. Yes. In this case, case number, I think six or five. Case number five. S1, uniform or non-uniform? Spherical cavity and it is at the center. Uniform or non-uniform? <laughs> uniform, yes or no? And on H2, it will be non-uniform. Everyone understanding this, yes or no? Okay. I hope everyone is drawing them together with me. Case number six, my dear friends. Then only two cases are left. Case number six, can you tell me? S1 and S2, uniform or non-uniform? S1, S2. Uniform or non-uniform? Non-uniform, sir. Both are non-uniform. Everyone understands this. Well done. This is very difficult to understand. I hope we are able to understand this. Both are non-uniform. <laughs> you get this, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Two more cases are left. I hope everyone is drawing them with me. Once you have understood this, probably you can draw them on your own also. You can draw them on your own also. Not a problem. Case number seven. Case number seven. S1, S2. Uniform, non-uniform. It is at the center. Is it uniform, non-uniform? Sir? Yes. Is it uniform? No, beta. The diagram, the shape of the cavity is non-uniform. So it cannot be uniform. It has to be non-uniform and non-uniform. Do we understand this? Shape of yes, the cavity is not uniform beta, so it cannot be uniform. Okay. The last one in this category, my dear friends. Last one in this category. Abiram, what is the answer for this one? Now it is not at the center. S1 and S2. S1 uniform, sir. S2 non uniform. S2 non uniform. S1 also non uniform, beta. Because the shape of the cavity is non uniform. The charge is also placed not at the center. So it cannot be uniform in any case. Okay. It can only be uniform when it is a spherical. But if it is not placed at the center, it will not be uniform. As simple as that. Very simple as that. Do we understand? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Show you all the cases once again. Have you noted down these all eight cases? Everyone. 
I will show you from case number one. Case number one, S1 and S2, both uniform. We understand this? Yes, sir. Case number two, S1 non-uniform because it is not at the center. But S2 is uniform. We understand this? That is the most difficult case. That's it. Case number three, S1 shape is garbada. So non-uniform. But S2 shape is great uniform. Everyone understand? One, two, three. Then we come to number four. Number four, cavity is Utpatang shape, not uniform shape. So S1 is non-uniform, but outer is uniform. Therefore, it is uniform. Case number five, cavity is spherical and charge is at the center. So S1 is uniform, but S2 is non-uniform. We understand this? Case number six. Cavity is spherical, but you have charge not at the center, so both are non-uniform. We all understand this. So this has gone above our head saying bye bye. Bye bye. Understood, bye, bye. sir. Case number seven and case number eight. All are non-uniform. Uh, this is the tabular result. If you want it, all these cases. If I mark them instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, if I mark them as A, B, C, D, this is how the diagram will look like. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. These are the results. And this is all that you need to know about this particular chapter. And you must congratulate yourself because now we are done. With this particular chapter, we are done with your electrostatics as such. The next class, we'll move on to the next topic of electrostatics, which is known as capacitance. Anyone having any doubt on anything, please let me know. We are done with this chapter. Done and dusted. Anyone having any sort of doubt on this, please tell me. Everyone understands it? <laughs> okay, then I'll see you in the next class. That is tomorrow. We will begin our new journey with a new chapter. But remember, whatever we have done is going to again continue in the next topic and the next one and the next one and the next one till we finish your entire electromagnetism, including magnetic field and EMI. Till EMI, till EM waves, everything will be coming back together. In the last chapter, which is EM waves, everything will come together and then it will terminate and it will finish. Till then, see you. Next class. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Bye, sir.